about the Western Sahara issue a little over three years ago when I was at dinner with officials from the IMF, World Bank, and European Commission, when I asked them out of curiosity, what is the worst humanitarian situation in the world? And they responded to me, Western Sahara. I had no knowledge of Western Sahara at the time, but they explained to me the status quo and I blew, it blew my mind. I thought this can't be true. So after dinner, I began learning everything I could about Western Sahara and its history. I read every article and book I could find. I traveled to Algeria to visit the camps. I went to Tunisia to meet with parliament. Egypt to meet with government and continued on there from there to Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Jordan, Palestine. I wanted to know what the rest of the Arab and Muslim world thought about the situation. The more I learned, the more disgusted I became by the actions of Morocco, but even more so by the silence and complacency of these United Nations. I don't need to explain the current situation in occupied Western Sahara to you today because you already know. You know full well that there's no human rights mandate on the peacekeeping force that you implemented in 1991. You know about the massive human rights violations, suppression of free speech, indiscriminate arresting and imprisoning of journalists. You know how time after time courts of law from the EU to South Africa have invalidated trade agreements made by Morocco because they are illegal and against international law. Yet you do nothing but sit in silence. For over 44 years, the Sahrawi people have been denied their right to self-determination, despite stating full and clear that Western Sahara is a non-self-governing territory. In fact, that's why I'm here today, talking to a committee on decolonization. The fact that this committee is still here is astounding and shameful. Growing up, I used to look at leaders like you in this room today, and I had so much admiration, I wanted to be just like you. I thought you guys fought for the little guy, I thought you fought for justice, and it turned out to be a lie, because you don't stand for that. You don't stand for calling out France when they block a referendum year after year. You don't call out Morocco for its blatant lies and propaganda, suppression of free speech, plundering of natural resources, and countless human rights violations. I hope and pray that France never has to deal with their kids living in the desert and forgotten by the world. But if they do, I hope and pray that France has someone stronger than themselves to look to for help. What I find even more disturbing is when I look in this room and I see so many nations that have dealt with this situation firsthand and had their countries ripped apart by colonialism displacement and war and you sit and you do absolutely nothing and you are implicit through your inaction but the reality is it does not have to stop here because of the almost 8 billion people on planet earth the people that do have the chance to do something are sitting right here in this room you are the people that were given the power to decolonize nations and we can change something we can do it here and that's why I'm calling on every nation here to sign a pledge and an open letter to support a referendum of self-determination for the Sahrawi people. And over the next month, I will personally sign and send a letter to every single person present in this room today. Let the world know that we can end colonization. We can do it now. It cannot and it will not have to wait ever. Thank you.